get this presentation rolling. So Matt, uh, you just unmuted your line. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna let you go ahead and share yours and we'll go from there. Perfect, hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name's Matt, I'm with Ring Central. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, so like Josh was saying, um, I'm gonna be going over um, two different things. I'm gonna first be talking about um, your desk phone. So the phone that we're gonna be putting on your desk um, next week, getting that plugged in for you guys. I mean, the next thing I'm gonna be talking about is um, the service.ringcentral.com. That's gonna be where you access your settings for these extensions. Um, so first off, we'll just be talking about your phone. It is pretty straightforward. Um, this is one of the models, the Polycom BVX 450. Some of you may be having the 350 um, instead. They're very similar. The only difference is there's a few less line keys on that 350, um, but usability-wise, button-wise, they're all gonna be the same. Um, so for this instance, I'm just demonstrating using the BVX 450. Um, I'm gonna kind of be going over all the buttons on the phone um, and then how to do a couple different processes like uh, transferring a call, um, conferencing an additional call or checking your voicemail and such. Um, so first off, we have that home button right there. When you press that, you're gonna get that screen that you see on the phone um, on the presentation right now. It's gonna be how you access your contact log um, within the phone, um, access the settings specific to the phone. So. Phone specific settings would be like the screen brightness, um, things like that, the dial tone, um, whatever you wanna change. With that, you're gonna press that home button and then use those arrow keys to scroll and navigate through, um, which brings me to those next buttons, the navigation pad. Um, there are four cardinal directions, um, the up, down, left, and right, and then a center button to select. Um, so if you are navigating through that home menu, you're gonna be using those arrow keys um, and then that center button to select. Uh, Next, we have the voicemail button. Um, that, that voicemail button looks like the voicemail symbol um, on your cell phone. Um, it used to be an envelope, now it is that little, um, little circle, those two circles right there. Um, so you can press that button, it's gonna ask you to enter in your voicemail pin um, that I will be going over um, later in this presentation. Um, and then you can either check your voicemail using that button from your physical phone, um, or you can actually access some of your voicemail settings there as well. Next, we have the transfer button. Um, this is the hard key um, on the phone um, that to initiate a transfer. Um, there are four buttons underneath the bottom of the screen that I'll be going over later. One of those during an active call is also gonna say transfer. Um, you can either press the hard button on the phone or the soft key below the screen um, to transfer a call. And I'll be going into greater detail on that in just a little bit. Hold is the same way. We have a soft key underneath the screen while you're on an active call, as well as that hard button on the phone. When you press that button, um, your caller is gonna go on hold, um, and you can press that button to resume that call as well. Next thing over on the right, we have a headset pickup button. Um, the headset pickup button and the speakerphone button are both gonna light up green when they're in use. Um, the headset pickup button um, will um, answer a call through your headset, or if you are already on a call, it will switch that call over to your headset. Um, there's a port in the back of the phone where you can plug in a headset, um, and then you're gonna just use that button to turn on or off that headset. If you are on a call on the headset, and you press that headset button again, that's gonna actually hang up that call. Speakerphone works very similar, um, where if you are either on a call, um, you can press that button to switch that call over to speakerphone, or you can press that button to answer a call um, through speakerphone. Um, it will also hang up that call if you're on speakerphone and you want, uh, and you press that button again, it's gonna hang up that call. So if you're on speakerphone and wanna switch it over to the handset, you're just gonna pick up the handset and the call's gonna go through the handset rather than speakerphone um, and vice versa. So if you're on the handset and wanna switch to speakerphone, just press the speakerphone button and then you can hang up the handset. Right below that, we have the mute button. Um, that's gonna mute your audio. So if you need to say something privately to somebody around you, um, you can press that uh, mute button and it's gonna light up nice and red, um, show that your audio is muted, and then you can press that again to unmute yourself. Finally, there on the left side of the phone, um, we have the volume control. When the phone is in an idle state like this, it's gonna adjust the volume of the ringer. Um, so you can either increase the ringer volume or decrease the ringer volume. Um, and then when you're on, on an active call, whether that be through the handset, through the speakerphone, or through the headset, 
um, that volume control is going to adjust the volume of the active call. So that has two different purposes, volume of the ringer when the, you're not on a phone call and then volume of that phone conversation when you are. So moving on, these are the soft keys that I was talking about. Um, they're going to change state depending on the state of the phone. Um, so they're going to show four different things um, when you're just, when the phone is idle and then when you're on a call, it's going to show four different things. Um, for uh, additional things, and I'll show you what those show. Um, next to the phone, we have line keys. Um, so these are gonna be keys that are associated with your phone line. When we first plug in your phone, if you haven't made any setting changes online, um, what those keys are gonna show is it's gonna show your name associated with each line. Um, these are voice over IP phones, so phone over internet, um, basically you have an unlimited number of lines on the phone. So when we first plug it in, you're going to see that, um, all 12 line keys show your name. Um, there are some setting changes that we can make on the back end, which I will show you how to do later in this presentation. Um, that allows you to correspond those line keys with specific people that you either call a lot or need to see whether they're on the phone call. Um, so you see that those light up green. If you associated those lines with somebody else other than you, when that person's on a call, it's going to show a little red dot next to their name, um, knowing, showing that that person is on a call, so not to call them or transfer a call to them. Um, the first two lines, even after you make those changes, are always going to be associated with your name. Um, so the top two line keys on the left are always going to have your name next to them. Um, the rest of those 12 line keys, or so those additional 10 line keys, then can be associated with um, additional people within the company. Um, so these are the soft keys uh, during an active call. The one on the left is going to say hold, then the second one's going to say end call, and then transfer, and then more. And under more, we have a conference um, and a park option as well. Um, hold and transfer, you can see you can either press the soft keys to initiate that hold or transfer, or you can press that hard button that's programmed um, directly onto the phone. Um, ending a call, I'll go back real fast. Ending a call, you can either press that button to end a call, otherwise you can just hang up the handset, or if you're on speakerphone or um, headset, you can press either one of those buttons, whichever one you're on, um, that will hang up the call. You don't necessarily have to press that end call button, but if you do, it will obviously end the call. Um, to transfer a call, um, the default transfer type for these phones is what Polycom likes to call a consultative transfer, or what most people would call a warm transfer. Um, so if I was transferring a call to Josh, I would talk to Josh first and then send that caller off to them. Um, this default transfer type can be changed in the settings. So if you want to change it to a blind transfer, which I'll show you how to do in just a sec, a blind um, to switch that default transfer type, you're going to press that home button, use the navigate or those arrow keys to navigate to settings. Um, and then under basic settings and preferences at the very bottom of the list, there's going to be one that says default transfer type you can switch that from consultative to blind. If you don't switch that, the default transfer type is going to be consultative. Um, so to do that, you're gonna press the transfer button, either the soft key or the hard key programmed on the phone. Um, at that point, once you press transfer, your caller automatically goes on hold. So there's no need to put them on hold and then press transfer, you just press transfer, they go on hold. Um, then you are gonna type in the person's extension or phone number that you're transferring to. Um, so this, you can transfer to an external number. It doesn't have to just be internal. Um, once you type in the extension of the phone number, your phone is going to ring out to that number. Um, you're going to speak to the contact. And then once you feel comfortable transferring, you can press that transfer button again. A blind transfer, um, you're going to press that transfer button. Um, at that point, one of those soft keys underneath the screen is going to say blind. You're going to press that blind soft key. At that point, you can dial the extension or the phone number. Um, and then uh, the soft key on the far left of the screen is going to say send. You're just going to press send, and that caller is going to be sent off directly. Um, so there's an extra button press. You just have to press that blind soft key, then type in that number. Um, and then rather than your phone ringing out, you can press that send button to send that caller directly to them. Um, again, you can switch this default transfer type if you do more blind transfers, I recommend going into the, the your phone settings and switching that. Um, so those are the soft keys that I was showing. Um, so you press that blind soft key. Um, once you type in a number, um, you can press that send soft key right there. Um, another option you have with this is conferencing an additional caller. Um, 
you can join, um, have two additional people. So it can be you plus two other people um, on the physical phone. Um, so if you're setting up a larger conference call, um, you're gonna wanna set that up um, outside of the phone. This would be kind of an on the fly conference where you need to bring somebody in real fast. Um, there is just the unfortunate limitation that you can only bring in one additional person. So it's you plus two other people on a call with this conference call option. Um, so in order to do a conference call, you're gonna press more on the far right. Um, and then the screen is gonna show conference on the left there and you can press conference. Um, this is gonna work the same as transfer where once you press conference, your caller goes on hold. So there's no need to put them on hold first and then um, press conference. Once you press conference, they go on hold. You're gonna dial the um, extension or phone number. Um, at that point, your phone is gonna ring out again. Um, wait until that second person answers that call. Once they answer that call, you can press that more and conference button again, um, and that will merge everybody together. Um, once, when you are on an active call, you can actually split um, that call as well. Rather than that call saying conference now, that, that button is gonna say split, and so you can actually split that call back into two separate calls. Uh, moving on, we have um, the, those scroll select tools. Um, the scroll select tools are also gonna be how you access your call log. Um, so when the phone is idle, when you're, the phone, you're not on a phone conversation or in with, within the menus, um, you can press the left arrow key to see the received calls that you um, received. So it'll show a list of all the calls you received. Um, if you press down, it's gonna show all your missed calls. Um, so when you miss a call, you're gonna get a little miss call notification. To clear that notification, you're gonna press down on the arrow key, and that's gonna open up your missed call log, um, and that will clear that notification. You can scroll through to see all your missed calls. And then right is gonna show your most recently placed calls. Um, so that list holds up um, to, I believe, 100 calls, um, and you can clear that list out um, if you want, otherwise after 100 calls, it'll just clear automatically. Um, to check your voicemail, we're gonna press that voicemail button there on the left. Um, you're gonna enter in your voicemail pin, and I'm gonna show you how to um, reset that in the portal, so that's coming up next. Um, at that point, you enter in your pin, you're gonna press pound, so it's gonna say, when you press that button, it's gonna be somebody's voice saying, um, please enter in your pin and press pound. Enter in your pin, press pound, and it's gonna give you a few options. The first option, if you have a voicemail, is gonna say press one to listen to your voicemails. And then the second option is gonna say press two for account options. Um, so you can actually change your voicemail greeting directly from the phone. Um, and I, but I will show you how to actually change that from the portal as well. If you do change your voicemail greeting from the phone, it can be a little confusing. So you press that voicemail button, enter in your pin, press two for account options. Um, and then it's gonna say, press two to record your greetings. You're gonna press two to record your greetings. And then this is the confusing part because it's gonna say, press one for use your user greeting and press two um, for your voicemail greeting. If you press one for your user greeting, that message is actually gonna play before your phone even rings. Um, so if you record your voicemail greeting there, it's gonna seem like a caller's got kicked straight to voicemail. So you gotta make sure that you wait for that second option where it says press two for your voicemail greeting. Um, this, uh, in the top right of the phone, there's a little light, that's gonna light up red, um, and that's gonna show that you have a voicemail, as well as there's gonna be a little voicemail uh, icon next to your name uh, on the line keys as well. Um, so that's the basics for these phones. Um, here's a couple links um, that you can access um, for um, a quick guide to these phones. Um, just visit ringcentral.tcu.edu um, and then the, the phone manuals are going to be there. Um, let me, I will jump in the chat real fast to see if there's any questions specific to um, the phone. Um, Matt, there was a question about uh, voicemail to email option being turned on, and I just answered saying yes, that that is uh, a function that's there. Will you talk just a little bit about how Ring Central will send that information to you and kind of what you'll see through that process? Yeah, so whenever you get a voicemail, um, you're also going to um, get an email. Um, let's see, do you know if, if we jump into the account? Um, so this is going to be where we're 
we're going next anyway, um, but I kind of want to look at some settings here. Um, you'll receive um, an email. Um, it's not going to um, mark that email at, or that voicemail as read um, when you receive that um, notification. Um, so when you receive um, a voicemail, you're going to be emailed um, by email. So right here, as well as let's see if it shows if it will include an attachment. So it's going to include an attachment as well. Um, so when you get a voicemail, you're going to get that little notification on your um, on your hard phone, as well as you're going to receive an email, and that's going to have a voicemail attachment, so you can play it directly through your email as well. Okay, so moving on, we're going to actually be talking about this website um, that I navigated to. I'll go back to the presentation, and I'll be kind of bouncing back and forth between the presentation and that website. Um, so to access your settings... Hey, Matt. Before, yes. you, before you go into the settings section, the, I want to stress to everyone, you know, we've been posting this link on the two pages that you had before to visit ringcentral.tcu.edu. All of the guides, a very long guide that's like 140 pages long about how to do everything on your phone is on that website, as well as a two-page guide that you'll get a physical print out of when you get your phone. So I'm just wanting to make a note to everyone that that is a very important site to remember. We've been posting that in chat ringcentral.tcu.edu, those full guides are there. So all the stuff that Matt is going over is fully covered in that documentation at that point. Sorry, Matt, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, no problem. Okay, and from that, that website, it will probably also show you a link um, to this link as well, service.ringcentral.com. This website um, can be accessed at any time. You can either navigate there through that TCU portal, or you can go to this website directly. Um, this is going to be the website that you access your settings to your phone. Um, you are enabled for single sign-on. Um, so when you first navigate to that, this page, it's going to have this sign-in um, bubble that pops up. It's going to ask you to enter in your email or phone number. You don't want to enter in your email or phone number. You actually want to click on that button in the bottom right that says single sign-on. That's going to take you to kind of your TCU splash page where you'll enter in um, your email and your password um, specific for your single sign-on. Um, and then that will take you to this home page. So if I can navigate back to this website, um, you're going to be taken to kind of overview page, which will show your most recent messages as well as your most recent calls. Um, all of that again can be accessed. You'll receive an email when you have a voicemail um, and um, that call log can be accessed from the physical phone. So you probably won't be going to this website for that purpose. You can navigate to messages. You can see all your voicemails. You can see your call log listed here. You can see all the company contacts listed here as well. Um, but again, all of that can be accessed from your physical phone. Um, so really the main aspect of this website is gonna be the settings right here. So if we jump back to the PowerPoint real fast, um, these are your main sections of settings. We have user details, that's gonna be where you change your voicemail pin. So this is gonna be the crucial part is user details under settings. We have phones and numbers, um, that's gonna be where you set up those line keys. So we call it presence. Um, and so it's gonna be how you associate those individual line keys with somebody else's name. Screening, green and hold music is gonna be change what your caller hears when they call your extension. Call handling and forwarding allows you to create kind of your call flow. Um, so most people just want their hard phone to ring, and that's totally fine, um, but you can also have the, um, calls forwarded to your cell phone. And then finally, messages and notifications, that's going to be where, you, uh, or it's just going to be messages now, I believe, they switched it. Um, that's going to be where you can change your voicemail greeting. Um, so diving back into this website, first off, we're going to be how to change your voicemail pin. So that's going to be under user details. We're going to click on that change password in the bottom left. It's going to open up with the change pin icon. So I'll kind of walk you through that process. If we go back to this website. We're going to click on user details. Now this is going to be something that um, uh, Josh, do you know when the accounts are if the accounts are already activated? So that's a really good question. We just had someone ask that. Um, your account. So this service.ringcentral.com uh, system your, is your Ring Central account. It is not activated yet. We believe it's going to happen uh, on during the weekend or early Monday morning when we begin the deployment. So this site that Matt is visiting now, you will not be able to visit until just right about the time that we're deploying your phones. Okay, so with that being said, since we have a weekend coming up, 
this, if you are going to pull anything from this presentation, this is what you're going to want to remember to do first thing Monday um, or early next week when you arrive. It's going to be to change your voicemail pin. Um, if you don't change your voicemail pin, um, you'll still be able to make and receive calls, but you won't be able to check in your voicemails. Um, so to change your voicemail pin, again, we're going to go to settings. We're going to click on user details, and we're going to scroll down to this um, on the bottom left where it says change password. We're going to click on that, and we're going to enter in our new voicemail pin right here. Um, voicemail pins have to be at least six to 10 non-repeating numerical numbers. Um, so I recommend um, using um, either a birthday, uh, a date that's important to you, um, or you can use a four digit pin twice as long as that's non-repeating. Um, so non-repeating, you can have two numbers in a row that are the same, so you can have two, two. But once you have two, 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 then it's gonna kick it back to you. Um, it may also, after you change your pin, it may ask you to change your security question and answer. Um, this is only gonna be used if you call Ring Central Support directly. Um, so you are gonna, we're gonna be talking about how the, if you have questions, that process, you won't actually be ever calling Ring Central Support directly, most likely. If you do, they're gonna be asking you the security question right here. And Matt, we've already pre-populated those security questions because we want all individuals contacting the service desk or the IT support help desk. So I'll be talking about that a little bit later that that won't be something that anyone should get hit with. Perfect. So when you change your pin, if it pops up asking you to change your security question and answer as well, just don't do it. Just change your pin and then exit out of that window. Make sure after you uh, make any changes, you click this save button on the bottom right. Um, after this, it's going to be, there's a lot of information that I'm covering. Just know that, um, again, this, this presentation is recorded. You can always reference it again later. And that as much information as this seems like I'm covering, it's very uh, user-friendly. Play around with this, click through. Um, but really the main thing that you want to pull from this is that change password to change your voicemail pin. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with these settings as well. So we can create specific user hours for ourselves as well. Um, so if you go back to this PowerPoint, we can um, change user hours, which allows us to create separate call flows for ourselves. So during our active um, um, office hours or something, we can have our hard phone ring. And then when um, we're out of the office, we could set specific hours um, where our cell phone rings, uh, for instance. Um, so to access our user settings, we are to our access our user hours, we're gonna go under user details. And there's the second tab over says user settings. Um, and we have user hours right here that we can change. Um, so by default, it's gonna be 24 hours. Otherwise we can select custom hours. Um, and select specific um, hours that we want our phone to ring. And we can either have calls go straight to voicemail after those hours, or we can have them um, follow a separate call flow. And I'll show you where to do that, make those changes as well. Also, if your um, time is wrong on your hard phone, you're gonna actually have to change it from this website under regional settings right here. Um, you can change your um, specific time zone and that's gonna adjust on your physical phone. Moving down to phones and numbers. Uh, phones and numbers is going to be where you can see what your phone number is as well as you can um, change those line keys on the specific phone. Um, so again, when I talked about the phone, the first two line keys are going to be your name. Um, the rest can be associated with other people. But when we first plug in your phone, um, it's going to show your name on all those line keys. So if you want to change that, we're going to go to this website, go to settings, go to phones and numbers, and then we're going to navigate over to the phones tab right here. So if we go back to this PowerPoint, those buttons are all broken down right here. So phones and numbers, phones, and then this button says, that says presence. So if we go back to this website, phones and numbers, phones, and then over here we have presence. And we're gonna see that the first two line keys are gonna be your name or whoever's name it is associated with the phone. And then we can click select user over here and then search this box to find anybody internal um, and associate that line key. Um, we have 12 total line keys, so you have one through 10, um, and then you have two on this page as well. If you select more people than those 12, um, it's only gonna show those first 12 line keys. Um, you don't have to use up all 12. If you just use one, it's gonna open up the rest of those line keys, so then the first two are gonna be associated with your name, um, and the rest are gonna open up um, 
and you can actually press and hold the line key next to somebody, an open line, um, and add outside numbers. So internally, you have to add through this website if it's anybody internal. And if you want speed dials that are like your home phone number or a, a spouse's cell phone number, um, you're going to have to at least set up one through presence to open up those additional line keys. And you're going to press and hold um, next to an open line key, and you can add an outside number. Screen hey Matt, could you could you show them how they can actually look at what it'll show up on their what it looks like on their phone? When you yeah. Go back to presence. This so is if we really click cool on presence. Thing. We can click on this preview on my phone screen. Since this this particular one is not associated with the physical phone, um, there's no physical phone associated with the TCU admin. It's not going to show the actual phone screen. But if you click on that button, you will have a phone associated with you. So it's going to show you what that phone screen is going to look like. So it's going to show how the first two line keys are going to be your name, and then the rest are going to be associated with whoever you selected. Um, so again, the preview looks a little strange here, just because this TCU admin doesn't have a physical phone. Um, but with you, if you click on that, it's going to show you a kind of image of what your phone screen is going to look like. Moving down, we have screening, green and hold music. This is where it gets kind of fun. This is going to be where what your caller hears when they call you. Um, so by default, this is going to be your settings. We have connecting message, which says, please hold while I try to connect you. Then your phone is going to ring. Then we have your hold music set here. And then audio while connecting is going to be music. If you want kind of more of a typical um, call experience for when somebody calls you. Um, these are kind of the settings that I recommend. Turning off connecting message so you don't have that please hold while I try to connect you. And then switching that audio for audio while connecting to just straight ringtones. Um, that way when somebody calls you, it's they just hear ringtones rather than it saying please hold while I try to connect you and then music. Um, otherwise, you can kind of select different music that you want to play there. We um, have a different selection. User greeting by default is turned off, but this is that that greeting that I was talking about that can be kind of confusing if you record your voicemail greeting from the physical phone. Um, if you record that there, it's gonna show that user greeting is turned on. And again, user greeting just plays before your caller reaches you, where by default it says, um, uh, thank you for calling your name and then your phone rings. So if you record your voicemail greeting there, um, it's gonna confuse everybody. Um, but you can change your old music, you can change your audio while connecting to either, again, set it to ringtones, or you can select select music, or you can select custom and upload an audio file. Um, just be careful with if you upload an audio file as you probably don't have the rights to that song. Um, so if, if you're uploading something, be careful with that. Um, make sure you click save here at the bottom right after you make any changes. Um, I'm gonna hit cancel though. Call handling and forwarding. This is gonna be um, the steps that um, your phone takes when somebody calls your extension. Um, so if we had somebody with a hard phone, you're going to see this first one, which is a desktop and mobile app, um, which we have desktop and mobile apps available. Um, we're not rolling that out. We're not training on that currently right now. Um, that's something that um, if, if you guys show interest, they may, may um, kind of explain that later. Um, but that's going to be that first toggle switch. The second toggle switch is going to be your phone. Um, so again, this, this user doesn't have a specific hard phone associated with them, but that second phone is going to be associated with them. Um, and then you can have numbers forwarded to your cell phone, stuff like that. Um, and you can have things ring sequentially or simultaneously. So if I had my hard phone, um, which is going to be by default set for four rings in 20 seconds, you can enter in a cell phone here as well. Um, um, and toggle that switch on and off. And again, if you have it ring sequentially like this, it's gonna ring this duration on your hard phone and then it's gonna ring your cell phone next. Um, or you can set it to simultaneously and you would have things ring um, at the same time. Um, with this as well, um, you can have those after hours call flow. So I didn't change what the user hours are, but if we clicked on after hours, we could select a specific call flow um, by default, it's just going to send callers straight to voicemail outside those hours, but you can actually have another call flow that looks similar to this um, so that it forwards to your cell phone after hours rather than ringing your hard phone or vice versa. Finally, we have the messages tab here at the bottom. This can be where you can change your voicemail greeting. Um, so again, you can change it either from the physical phone by pressing that voicemail button, um, or you can go to this website. Um, 
click on edit under voicemail greeting, you're gonna have a few different options. If you click play here, just to let you know, it's not gonna play your name. So the audio file that's uploaded to this website is just a generic um, greeting that doesn't have a, a specific name listed. Um, so if you need to hear how the system pronounces your name, if you're using this voicemail greeting, you're gonna have to call your phone number and hear how it pronounces your name. Because again, if you play this audio file, you won't be able to hear how it pronounces your name. It's just gonna leave blank right there but click on custom if you want to record a custom greeting. Um, there's going to be three different options how to record by phone. So you can enter in a phone number. Once you enter in a phone number, it's going to ring that phone um, and then it's going to follow their prompts. You can record that greeting. Um, computer audio or computer microphone. Um, though I only recommend doing this if you have a headset plugged in. If you're just using your laptop, uh, microphone is going to be really low quality audio. So I recommend recording it by phone. Um, or you can import a file. So if you have a .wav or .mp3 file of um, your uh, voicemail recording, you can upload it directly here. Um, so that's the basic settings um, on this website. Again, make sure um, on Monday morning or to early next week, you go to user details and you change your voicemail pin right here. That's the crucial thing. All these other settings um, I just kind of went over, um, you can play around in this website kind of familiarize with it. But again, the most important is that you change your voicemail pin every year. Um, so with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and toss it back over to Josh. Uh, I don't think we can hear you, Josh. You're muted. You're, uh, I had accidentally clicked on it as I moved my mouse. So I was gonna say before you stopped sharing, Will you pull up your screen one more time? Yes, sir. And I want to uh, to make a, a point to the rest of the group. I, I, I talked a little bit about this in chat. Um, one of the things that we're doing is go into the call handling portion where you were talking about the fact that you have a physical phone or a home phone or maybe a desktop soft phone app. What's really cool about Ring Central is that we're not only giving you new phones, but in the future, we're gonna have some options to allow you to download an application on your desktop computer or onto your mobile device to allow you to, to continue conversations, take calls from your TCU number on those devices. But at uh, the beginning of our presentation, our, 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 our deployment process, we are really just focusing on the phones themselves to get them out in your hands, make sure that calls are coming in and that things are going, uh, going through. We have a lot of content on that ringcentral.tcu.edu website about where you can go download those apps and explore and learn more about them. But one of the things that'll be unique to this is that uh, it's what's really cool is that when you start adding in other phone lines like cell phones and home phones and others, that there's a feature up there at the top of this screen that says sequential versus simultaneous, meaning you could have all these lines, you know, ring in an order or ring all at once. And there's so there's some unique things based on your business process that I think are going to be really unique and some opportunities that are there. This is probably not something that you'll need to change in the beginning but the voicemail piece will be something that will be very critical and then making sure that your name and your, and your call presence are, are, are all there as well. And then one other thing I wanted to point out, Matt, that's been difficult for people to adjust to, can you scroll up just a little bit? Can you go to the section about, uh, let's see, screening, greeting, and hold music? So one of the things about Ring Central is when we transition your phone, instead of it just ringing and say, you know, like a normal phone when you call someone, it'll say, I'm gonna to try to connect you to Joshua Tooley. Please hold while I try to connect you to Joshua Tooley. That's this connecting message option that's right here. It's easy to turn off. If you disable it, it'll just start uh, going to this, the next stage, which is connecting with audio. So it's just gonna start playing music. And Matt mentioned earlier, that some people might just wanna hear ringtones. So it's simple for you to go in and check or uncheck those options to change to a ringtone. And I did that myself. Like I had, I left it to say, uh, you, thank you for contact or I'm gonna reach out to Joshua Tooley for you, please hold. And then it starts ringing instead of playing music. But that's one thing that will be different with Ring Central. And you'll know someone who's moved to a Ring Central phone is that unless they go make these changes, when you call, it's like hearing somebody play some cool music in the background while they try to connect them. So just don't let that catch you off guard because I had a user today that called me and said, they called my phone and they said it was going straight to voicemail. No, it wasn't going straight to voicemail. The person was calling. It said that they were trying to connect them over and it started playing music until that person answered the phone call instead of getting a traditional ring. So just keep that in mind. If you're getting complaints from people as they're calling you and you wanna change that experience, 
that capability is fully available to you here in this audio while connecting and this connecting message. Don't ever turn both of them off though. And this is a funny thing. We had a user when we first did our deployments, they turned them off and by turning off the connecting audio message and the audio while connecting, nothing happens until someone re answers that phone. So they call and they just hear silence. So don't ever turn those two options off, at least leave one on and most likely I'd say leave both on. And if you want the traditional process that you experience today, just change it to ringtones and it'll be more like an experience that you have with other phones that others are working through. But I wanna point those out because those are two big pieces that a lot of individuals have had questions about as we've done some testing with this is both how to handle the call when the user's coming in uh, and, and what their experience is, as well as what, where is it gonna ring? On my desk, on my, on my computer, on my iPhone, on my home phone? All of those kinds of things are opportunities that you have to play and explore. And I always encourage you, no matter what setting you change, always pick up the phone and call yourself and see what that experience is like. Don't ever make a change to a system and, uh, and all of a sudden you might've turned something off and created a bad experience for someone who's calling you, always test. So I just wanted to point those two items out, Matt. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to cover in these before we flip over to some expectations and support? Um, I don't believe so. You can pass it back over.